construction questions that maybe we can't answer, you know, maybe they've, they've got some answers for you on those. So in terms of the agenda for today's discussion, uh, we're going to run through a summary of, of the proposed improvements. We're going to dig into the, the details of the construction phasing, um, which I'm sure is what most people are interested in, in hearing about, uh, a communication plan uh, for during construction, and then uh, open it up to a, a question and answer session. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Angie, who's going to run through a, a short presentation. So I'll present the summary of design and construction phasing and then turn it back over to Scott. So um, generally, um, as we've been talking, the project includes full paving replacement. So from building phase to building phase, the existing brick will come out and will come in with the new precast concrete unit paver over our, our sub slab. The new unit paver retains the same warm character as the existing brick. Um, we are also um, proposing or seeing a number of utility upgrades. Um, there will be new water main, um, a new 12 inch water main along the north section of Dubuque and new eight inch water main along the east section of College. All new telecom lines going in across the full study area. Um, enhanced storm sewer system with storm intakes um, being installed across the pedestrian mall and then new electrical system. So consistent with the um, 2014 uh, master plan, we are, will see a new multi-layered lighting framework, um, all new functional safety lighting, and then uh, layers of accent lighting at the trees. Um, the public art um, pieces will be lit, and then also the story walls. Um, we're creating secondary destinations. Um, really, the new focus of the pedestrian mall will be the permanent stage canopy at the Weather Dance Fountain. Future construction may include a shade structure at Black Hawk Mini Park, and then the story walls, um, which I'll show you renderings of those. They are located at the east entry at Clinton, and then also at the uh, to screen the transformer at Black Hawk Mini Park. All new site furnishings will be installed across the pedestrian mall, including both fixed and movable tables and chairs, um, new trash receptacles, and then um, a couple of different bench types. The existing limestone walls that are leaning and showing kind of significant gaps between the pieces will all be repaired. And then um, we will you'll see all new um, shrub and ground cover planting areas and new trees at select locations. This um, slide shows the locations for the new um, pedestrian pull light. So the existing globe lights are nearing the end of their serviceable, serviceable life um, and showing signs of deteriorate, deterioration. So we're coming in with this more contemporary Vega pull light. It's a down light. Um, and it was, many of you may have seen it. It was, there was a mock-up at Black Hawk Mini Park for, for quite a few months. It's actually still up. It's still so, up. Yeah, so it's still there. Okay. So if anybody's interested after the meeting, go check it out. So it is a, a more contemporary fixture that will be um, distinct to the pedestrian mall. And then we are introducing the power pedestals in the planting areas. This enhanced electrical capacity will better support all the program that's been successful across the pedestrian mall. Um, this slide shows you the um, benches that will be installed. Again, furnishings distinct to the pedestrian mall. We have a fixed table over by the Iowa City Public Library, some movable tables and chairs at Black Hawk Mini Park. And then the Plainwell bench will be on the east section along College and can also um, function for benchmark benches if the, as the program continues. Um, consistent with the master plan in the downtown core, um, there will be two wayfinding kiosks installed as part of the second phase of the project um, at the entry at Lynn and also um, at Clinton. So, and then the trash receptacles, there will be new recycling um, system, one uh, drinking fountain at the, at the library, and then bicycle racks um, consistent with what was installed along Washington Street, and we're increasing the bike capacity by about 13. I would, um, I think those are fine, but I would, I think you should check my report because Washington, they would overestimate the number of bikes that actually can go into those racks. They assume that you have no handlebars and no baskets, and 
and what else? Just for your numbers. So you're saying the distance between each of the racks? Mm -hmm. And they're going to see the three court books are going to be Thank you. Thank you. But they, but otherwise, you know, the mom can't even know the set of I'll add that she doesn't know the car. <laughs> <laughs> And this uh, slide shows a rendering of the permanent stage canopy. Um, this uh, expands the kind of stage configuration um, it, from the existing footprint. It is an enlarged um, covered performance stage with integrated lighting. Um, it's centered on the Dubuque Street axis, so it, it will be a view terminus um, to the entire north section of the walkway. And it's designed to be flexible um, with multiple lighting configurations and supports. It's been designed to support a range of different um, sizes of performance from very small groups to kind of larger Friday night concert series performances. And I would add one comment, which you said you're going to talk to Summer of the Arts, but if they, if they don't put Turner Music down, you might as well not spend a penny on that. So if you're talking into it, great. This is a plan rendering of the Black Hawk Mini Park, um, where the design intention is to create an open and flexible design to support the um, successful programming efforts that have been occurring um, in the downtown space or area. We're also uh, showing the story wall again to screen the transformer at Park at 201. And this is a rendering of the um, story wall entitled A Mark Was Made and it celebrates residents who have shaped and influenced Iowa City across the five different categories, um, community, discovery, commerce, education, and culture. And these um, names came to us through an outreach effort and, and survey with the residents of Iowa City. And it is also designed to be flexible. So these uh, timeline pieces, about 18 inches or so in length, can actually come off and can be uh, changed out if you want to celebrate another another round of uh, residents. And this is a rendering of the story wall um, that will be located over at the east entry at Clinton. And this will include, west. excuse me, sorry, west, the west entry over at Clinton and includes uh, the poem, Writers in a Cafe, written by Marvin Bell on the eve of the city's designation to become a um, city of literature. It will sit um, right whoops, here. So here's, of course, Clinton. And then that transformer is located about right here. So it will uh, run north, south, and screen that transformer from view when you're entering. Yeah. 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 Actually, it'll run north-south. Right. It'll run north-south, north so you can read it as you enter from, oh. from the west. Yeah. So it terminates, this, right. um, it terminates this kind of entry room with the trees and blocks that view of the transformer from guests coming into the pet mall. The Wells Fargo ATM is about right, is it right there? Yeah. Right here. So it come it shifts to the east. I think it's Maybe like one 20, tree. Twenty plus or minus feet to the east. Yeah. Sure. So um, moving into construction phasing, so um, as many of you heard during the pre-presentation discuss discussion, it is a um, two-year construction period. The um, kind of orangish color, the Dubuque Street section, um, is phase one, or 2018 construction. And then the green um, College Street sections is phase two construction for 2019. So. Similar to what many of you saw during construction of Washington Street, um, the city and Portson committed to maintaining access to businesses and residences at all times. There will be the eight foot wide walkway along the businesses, along 
it increases to 11 along that east section of Dubuque. And then Scott will provide more detail about the communication plan, but business owners will be given two different notices when there will be construction activities that will limit um, access into their businesses. That'll be one week ahead of the uh, impact and then again within 48 hours. So a little bit more detail now breaking down um, phase one and phase two. This um, slide shows phase one construction beginning um, April 30th at the kind of heart or center um, of the pedestrian mall. And they'll, Portson will work themselves to the north and um, complete phase one construction around October 31st. So substantial completion has been targeted for October 31st of 2018. Um, there will be days where no work will be allowed um, for events are offered to you, such as the downtown block party, sidewalk sales, rag bride, taste of Iowa City. Um, again, to encourage uh, pedestrians to continue to come down and use the downtown court and ped mall. Will the uh, fountain stay or is it going to be changed? The question is about the Weather Dance Fountain. The fountain will stay, but there will be improvements with the granite paving. And we're also going to be introducing some integral lighting to the fountain. Um, is there work going to be done during Arts Fest and Jazz Fest? Those are not listed over there. Because yeah, because the, the, they're, they're being relocated off-site out of the Ped Mall. The question is about Arts Festival and Jazz Festival, and they are for 2018 being re relocated off of the Pedestrian yeah. Mall. Yes. Do you know uh, about the Pride Festival also? That's June 16th. Is that being relocated? Or? Uh, you know, the, I'm not certain on that one. Um, it, I have to do some checking. The question was about the Pride Festival, and we did, um, that is included on our, within our set, I believe, because we reached out, out to okay. them, so it's just about its location, I guess, yeah, and final sure standing. Yeah, I'm where they've relocated, um, and if they've turned in an application yet for okay. for that, but, yeah. They will be allowed to work on the weekends. Um, there are certain weekends that they can't, on the home football game weekends, um, we're not allowing to work Friday. 7 p.m. to 7 p.m. to no it's 5 p.m. on Friday to 7 a.m. on Monday <coughs> otherwise they would be able to yeah, we, the, also, yeah uh, we coordinated also with the question is about the Latino festival and we definitely did reach out about that date and um, should be included as well in the construction uh, set mm -hmm. yes The question is what happens with the various sculptures. sculptures. Yes, all, um, let's see, we have found new homes in the pedestrian mall for Jazz and Tickle My Keys. I'll go back to the plan. Um, so, oh yeah, tie the binds, I'm excuse yeah. I have done that repeatedly. Yeah, I okay. always call Tickle My Keys, tie my, or vice versa. Okay, so Jazz, the bronze sculpture, um, is in a similar location, so it sits right here. We have the ties that bind. Um, sits, gosh, Paul, am I right yeah, about right here? Right yeah. And then we, the solar marker and balance in place that are at Black Hawk Mini Park um, shift to, I believe one is right here mm -hmm. and um, right here. So in terms Dorothy, of yeah, Dorothy. yeah, in terms of during construction, those those are that pieces of artwork will be located off site um, to a secure place so that they don't get vandalized or damaged during construction, and then we'll bring them back at the end of the of the project and install them at the end. William. Yeah. Um, is the play gym right next to the library going to stay or is that also going to be? The question is about the play structure and the fixed play structure will stay in place. Okay. So really our limit, wor limit of work line um, goes okay. right around. Yep. So here is the flip fixed play structure. Okay. So that stays. <laughs> if 
Phase two is represented on this slide and shows our early start date May of 2019 um, with this substantial completion end of October. Um, and again, we've reached out to uh, local programmers about um, events where no work will be done during downtown block parties, again, sidewalk sales and taste of Iowa City. And with that, I'll turn it over to Scott Silvers. All right, so during construction, um, we'll have a variety of ways that you can communicate or get more information about uh, the pedestrian mall project, very similar to what we did on Washington Street. We do have a website that you can get more information at, and that's uh, that top bullet point. Um, we do have an email um, uh, where you can go and sign up for to get uh, emails to update you. Um, as construction progress and there's key milestones, we'll send out uh, emails on that. Um, we'll be reaching out via Facebook and Twitter, um, so look out for that. We are also going to be doing, uh, similar to what we did on Washington Street, weekly um, progress meetings where we're inviting the, the public and business owners to come to weekly construction meetings where we'll answer any questions and give an update kind of on where construction's at, how we're, how we're doing on our construction timeline, and what to expect um, coming coming down the road. And then my information is included there um, if should you want to get a hold of me. Um, and I also have business cards that were at the back of the table um, if you'd like to grab one of those. So with that, I'd like to open it up to any questions um, that we haven't already answered. I believe we've got a... Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We'll also post this uh, presentation on the city's website too. So, um, if you wanted to look back at the presentation, yeah, you can do that. Yes. Uh, I remember that something like forty-five percent of the existing trees are going to be cut down and replaced. Is that correct? Um, I don't know the exact percentage. Correct. That sounds about right. Maybe a little bit more than that, actually. Um, some of the trees. Although they are um, large, mature trees, urban trees, um, in talking with uh, arborists, not only our city arborists, but uh, third, uh, third party arborists, they get to a point where they're reaching the end of their life. And so we'll be removing some of those trees. So um, actually, I think it's closer to 50% of the trees will be removed and then replaced. I think we're going to be net one or two trees. And is the, um, the trees that are replacing, but the ones that are there that I'm thinking of, the ones that we're putting in the Probably uh, when we did, I guess I'm not certain on that. Yeah, I don't know when that. From the 80s? Okay. And so that means that in that case, many of them are useful like the some Yes. So are the species that are going to be planted? I don't know if you want to speak on behalf of the species. Yeah, we have the question is about diversity of tree species, and yes, we have a, a very diverse palette. I'm trying to think of exactly how many different types we have going in, but yes, it is a diverse diverse tree palette. Yeah, so it's certainly not a monoculture going in. So we have a, a nice range that's been coordinated with not only the city forester but also an urban arborist. Is that kind of information? That that was that would have been available in the January 16 council presentation mm -hmm. where we went through a listing um, of the different types of trees going in. One more time, please. I, I know that because I watched that. Yes. That oh, meeting, but sure. To find that information, you have to sit through the whole meeting, so it'd be nice that some of us would so pull that out onto the. That PowerPoint presentation is actually on our website at I believe at that that location that's uh, up there. So if you would like to. Um, look through it um, at your own leisure. It's up there. Yes. Uh, how will pedestrians move through the pet mall during the construction? Like the local businesses? The question is how will pedestrians move through the uh, from building to building during the construction period? So <coughs> this is the first phase, um, which will be this year. So interior part of the pedestrian mall will be um, torn up and new utilities, new street paper, new um, paving will be put in, in there. And during that uh, part of the first phase, pedestrian traffic will be up against the buildings. Um, similar to what we did in Washington, we've got uh, six foot high chain fencing 
that will um, fence off the, the uh, construction workers area uh, from the pedestrian uh, travel area. And so um, once, once that interior part is done, then pedestrian traffic will be out into um, the completed area space as shown. And um, there'll be a, a pass to each one of the businesses at that point. Um, so it'll be kind of somewhat of a maze of, of, of uh, fencing, but we'll also have some uh, signage, some temporary business signs that will direct people to each of their uh, businesses they're trying to get to or restaurants. So the same is true for the other um, the other phase, phase two, where we're going to be doing the interior part of the ped mall, working on the up, or we'll be doing the interior part of the ped mall. Pedestrian traffic will be up against the buildings, and then um, once the interior part's done, then pedestrian traffic will be out into the interior part, uh, very similar to what's done on phase one. Yes. Sure, the question is what, what time of day will, will construction um, occur? So according to the, the plans and specifications, construction is permitted uh, starting at 7 a.m. I think it's 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. 10 p.m., sorry, yeah, 10 p.m. Any other questions? So the question is, where will the fencing be when we complete the stage? Right. I think we'll kind of have to play that by ear, but yeah, the intent is to get to get this piece, phase 1A, done by the end of July, and then that would be back open to, to the public for use. So when you talk about the stage, you're really talking about the phase 1A. Right? Correct. That and that includes the stage okay. and the canopy. Yep. What is the total projected cost of the project, and how is it going to be paid for? Um, the, the estimated project cost is $7.4 million, and the costs are being paid uh, through geo bonds. Mm -hmm. So when you start that phase one A, is the fencing going to go all the way down to the mall right from the beginning? Yes. So phase one A is just a sub phase to to the overall phase one. Mm -hmm. So fencing will be put up for all of phase one starting April thirtieth. Oh. Yeah. Good question. But the alleys. Will be left open. The alleys will be left open. Okay. Correct. There will. The truck access comes in off the bottom of the line. That's correct. Yep. And one of the things that we'll be working on is making sure that we don't have construction vehicles parking in the alleys. We understand that that's very critical to the function of um, the business, business, business owners and, and residents that, that live down there and, and for trash hauling and, and waste pickup and, and that kind of stuff. So. so will the staging area be Blackhawk? That's correct. Yeah, the staging area will be up in Blackhawk Mini Park. So we'll have a construction trailer there, and, and that's, I would presume that that's where the, construct, the contractor is going to want to um, stage a lot of his materials from. And also, there was a contingency on the bid as far as the stage would have the awning. Yes. How did that come out? Came in really good, um, lower than our estimate, so we did include that with the, with the project. So. Yeah, so uh, the university is working on a project to uh, work on their, their facade on the Jefferson building. So there's some of the, the awnings over each of the doors. They're actually taking those off and doing some transom windows, I think. 
um, and an all new glass, and then yeah. Um, not that I'm aware of. If there were to be um, improvements made by the new building code or something out there, you would now just be the one to coordinate? Yeah, I think it would make sense. I mean, if you have uh, a lot of the buildings have just kind of like a recessed area off of the ped mall, um, I think it would probably make sense to try to do that at this time that we're doing construction up against your your building so if there is a period of time where i mean we're going to be maintaining access at all times to businesses but if there's a time where you wanted to do that where you're being impacted anyways then that might be a good time to do that mr mayor that's correct Do you have a breakdown? I guess I didn't bring a breakdown of the car. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, we don't have an itemized breakdown, but I know a lot of the cost um, was was uh, um, from the, the underground work. We have a, a pretty significant amount of water main that's going in. Um, along Dubuque Street. We got a new water main that's going in on the East Lake of College Street. Um, we're doing all new electrical, uh, all new lighting. Um, we are putting in a uh, telecom um, underground duct system for uh, private utilities to utilize that they can lease from the city um, so that we, we try to make it so that, you know, once we get the ped mall done that we're not tearing up the ped mall again. Um, we're enhancing the storm sewer system to, to excuse me, to, to make sure that um, we can handle those larger larger rain events without uh, ponding, um, shoring up the, the planter wall. So I guess uh, by and large, I, I don't know the exact percentage of, of money that's going towards the, the underground utilities, but a, a pretty significant amount of that uh, overall project cost is going towards that. Yes? Uh, any of the activities, uh, do you have any worries about uh, vibration? Sure. Yeah, we do have a, a requirement in the in the billing that the the conductors to to keep the vibration levels low. I can't remember exactly the the level that we had in there, but there is uh, a requirement to monitor that and try to keep the vibrations as low as possible. Um, we did look at as part of the uh, stage canopy. There's foundations associated with that, and so one of the things we are looking at is using uh, helical piers instead of driven pile um, or driven. Um, ductile iron uh, pile to try to keep those vibrations down. Um, there are some soils that aren't the best down there, so we're trying to work through that. So we're hoping that we can um, try to minimize that. I know one of the things that we did on Washington Street, uh, of course there's a lot of, we were working right up against the buildings there, was uh, just utilizing smaller hammers to, to break up the concrete. Um, that seemed to work really well. And the other thing that helps out with is, you know, when we first started Washington Street, we had a water main break in almost day one when we were moving pavement. I don't know if it was from the vibration of the pavement removals, but once we stepped down the hammer, uh, um, we we found that it took a little longer to remove the pavement, but we're causing less disruption to, to the adjoining businesses. Yes. Um, you're talking about the utilities for the ped mall. Uh, these utilities don't really service any of the other um, high-rise apartments or high-rise buildings downtown. I mean, this would just be for the the ped mall. So they're just being replaced because they're old. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And I'd be happy to, if you want to give me your contact information, I'd be happy to get you a breakdown of those costs. 
of what what we're con or what's contributing towards the underground utilities versus the site amenities and the uh, landscaping elements. Sure. Sure, good questions. Um, so one of the things that was included in the bid of the project was to um, install a shade structure kind of in this area. Um, we bid that as an, what we call an alternate, which um, depending on how bids come in, we can choose to accept that bid alternate or um, not go forward with that depending on costs. And that came in significantly higher than, than what we were ex expecting. And so um, we've decided to not move forward with that structure and keep this as an open, flexible space without any shade structure. So yeah, it would be open for uh, programming, um, any programming that the Summer of the Arts or the downtown districts have done in the past. Was uh, any consideration given to uh, hydronic heating so they could uh, melt the snow off the treadmill? Uh, I don't think we had given that any, any thought. Um, just right off the top of my head, I think the, the cost would be pretty significant with that. So, um, but yeah, no, th there wasn't any uh, thought given to that. Yes. Uh, sound system from the stage going to be extended at all into other areas of the mall? No, it'd just be right there on the stage. So in fact, there's really, the sound system, there's really actually no sound system associated with the, the stage and canopy. It's going to be as currently done with the Summer of the Arts where they bring in the sound system. We looked at options of um, having permanent speakers installed on the canopy, and it just didn't seem, you know, with the, the amount of pedestrian traffic and the, and the nightlife that goes on down there, we were just afraid that that was going to get vandalized. Um, and for the extra cost, we, we thought we'd put that towards other, other items in the ped mall. All good questions. Any any others? Yes. I don't know if you want to hit that one. Yeah. There. The question is: Are we uh, um, introducing any new plantings? And yes, we. There are significant um, new shrub and ground cover plantings, as well as replacement trees of those trees that have to come down for installation of utilities. Or if the tree, we had the, we had the trees reviewed by a third party arborist um, during the master planning phase, and then they came back um, last fall and took a look at the trees. So those trees, there are a number of trees that have to come down, but they are being replaced. And I think our total count is an increase of two trees. One more time, I'm have, I can't hear your question. Um, some of both, actually. Depends on how the uh, utilities are running and then also their assessment or, of their health. The question is, will the plants have an automatic watering system? Um, we have a quick coupler irrigation system that will be installed, so there will be access to water, and then the city maintenance staff will be um, watering the plant material during the establishment period. Well, if there's no other questions, we'll we'll stick around for as long as you guys want to stick around. And if you wanted to come up and ask us questions, or we can sit down with you and go through the plans. Or if you had questions for the contractor, we'd be happy to address those at any time. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Thank you.